Hey everyone. Uh, when I see patients come in for consults, I think uh, the number one research product that they talk about, they read about online or is recommended from their fertility clinic, it us is usually Co Coins MQ10 or CoQ10 for short. So it's quite a popular supplement that's been, um, I think, recommended by a wide range of practitioners and we have quite a bit of research on it for the use of fertility. And um, when it comes to fertility treatments, I, I find that I've Fun, I, I have a lot of focus on actually helping with the sperm health. And I, f I find just over the years that uh, working with, you know, uh, thousands of consults that in general, um, I find that patients have a very strong focus on egg quality and what perhaps a female partner can be doing to improve fertility. And the, in, the role of sperm health, the role of the partner's fertility is usually more on the sidelines, like they're not very focused on what the partner can be doing to help with sperm health and fertility. And uh, that is, you know, quite disappointing because uh, as we know now, 50% uh, of infertility cases have some degree of sperm um, factor or issue related as well. So either suboptimal levels or increased DNA fragmentation um, or something of that sort. So we really need to be looking at how can we support sperm health in patients to help uh, maximize your chances, not only with IVF and ICSI or insemination, IUI, but also natural cycles. And so um, a group of researchers recently published a new trial and uh, they looked at that very popular enzyme coenzyme Q10 uh, for the treatment of a very common um, condition we see with sperm health issues. And it's something called OAT or OAT. Um, and it stands for oligoasthenotratozoospermia. And basically OAT, um, is a lower uh, sperm count than what's set up by the World Health Organization as considered um, the normal threshold for, for fertility and a lower progressive motility. So how many of those sperm cells are actually moving forward in, in a, in a um, direction rather than just going in circles, for example. And um, they have a lower amount of normal, uh, morphologically normal sperm cells than they should be. So um, they looked at a group of, of patients that had this condition where it was what we call idiopathic, meaning there was no other reason, um, identifiable cause for the oat. So they, for example, if they had patients that had varicocele, which can damage sperm, they excluded them from the study. Um, if they were smoking or had alcohol intake, they excluded them just because they, that may impact sperm health as well and so forth. So they basically took out all patients who had this condition um, with a ad potentially identifiable cause for uh, the poor sperm health, and they focused just on patients that had this unexplained low sperm count, low sperm motility, and low normal sperm morphology. And they treated them with coenzyme Q10 for three months, and they did a sperm test before and after. And so it was very interesting because after the three months, they saw a, um, a range of changes in sperm health and hormones, and we'll, ch we'll chat about that as well. Um, and you know, coenzyme Q10, there's a lot of debate on like what's the optimal dose for this. And so it, I think it's really important to mention, like this study only used 100 milligrams, which is a very, very low dose compared to what um, a lot of patients take. And, and so it just goes to show even like a small dose may be ben a benefit for some patients. So they looked at this 100 milligram of coenzyme Q10 uh, for three months. And after that three month trial, what they found was that the sperm concentration went up by 2 million uh, sperm cells per milliliter. The progressive motility went up by 6%. And the sperm morphology had just a very mild improvement. So it was a 0.3% increase in the normal uh, sperm morphology rate there. And they also looked at a DNA fragmentation rate. So DNA fragmentation rate assesses for the integrity of the sperm DNA and how much um, damage there may or may not be. And that damage is hypothesized to mostly be related to elevated oxidative stress or reactive oxygen species, which can damage that DNA quality um, in the sperm cell. So what they found on average, the DNA um, sperm fragmentation rate went down by about 4% as well. And these were all statistically significant numbers. So what we're seeing is such a low dose of coenzyme Q10 may help to push these numbers into a um, healthier range. And um, while there are studies looking at higher doses, this is the, one of the newer studies that was published and it helps to pave that path looking at how simple um, nutri nutritional changes and lifestyle changes or dietary changes may actually pay, play a role 
um, and improving fertility as well because coenzyme Q10 is found um, through certain sources in our diet as well. Um, although not enough in amount that, uh, you know, we could reach these high therapeutic doses that are usually used in the studies, which is why supplements become so popular for patients that are trying to conceive. Now, it's very important before you start any supplement, obviously you speak with your healthcare provider, uh, speak with your licensed naturopathic doctor to talk about, you know, what's right for you, whether it interacts with any medications and what optimal dose uh, would be best for your case as well. Um, but I, I really um, enjoy sharing this information because I think it has a power to really empower patients on how they can take charge of their fertility. And um, I think vast majority of patients I see that come with poor sperm health are just told, well, that's it. There's really not much that can be done. And um, that I think is a can be a misleading answer and um, very disappointing answer because obviously we want to have, you know, um, some sort of sway over our own health. And uh, when we're looking at evidence-based approaches to doing that when it comes to reproductive health, there are a lot of uh, nutrients and coenzyme Q10 is really just that tip of the iceberg um, to get, you know, get us started um, on seeing how we can potentially improve our sperm health. And as always, everyone, if you have any questions, send us a direct message or drop us a comment and have a great rest of your day.